Okay, I'd like to welcome everyone to the City Council meeting. Now I'll call the meeting to order. Take it all. Stand to the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mary with us here today. If you can help us with the roll call, please. Sure. Alderperson Henry? Here. Barron? Here. Valdi? Here. Dean? Here. Grimmer? Here. Kasson? Here. Eicher? Here. Mayor Atwell? Present. Administrator Hafner? Here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll go to number four, approval of the minutes of September 20th. Move to approve the minutes. I second. Danielle seconds. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions passes. Okay, we'll move on to number five, City of Delafield citizens' comments. Come on up, sir. Well, thank you. <laughs> Hi, my name is Bob Transon. I live at 30, after talking to this, I live at 3018 Niagara Avenue, Delafield. And I come here to ask for a favor. I commend you for being here because I was an alderman for six years. I served on the fire department for 12. I was on a planning commission for 14. I was on a library board for about 14. Wow. Plus Delhart Sewer Committee. Anyway, that's not why I'm here, all right? I'm here as a Lion member, all right? And as you know the city, the Lion has contributed some things to the city, like the pavilion by the ballpark on Main Street. They uh, helped with raising money for the statues at the police and fire uh, building. They've also contributed to the library. They pay for programs, and they've also contributed uh, equipment. Okay? So, but I'm here as that Lion member, and I want to ask a favor. Um, I'm also... I go to Mexico every year for the last 15 years for eyeglass recycling. And what we've done in Delafield for recycling, we've always had these little boxes. And what, what I like to do is, what I propose to do, if you guys can help us, help the Lions with this, is to have something like this. I have to get up. Yep. Pass it around? Pass around. Oh, handouts. Thank you. Okay. I don't know if I have enough, but you can share. Oops, yeah. share. We can share. Okay. We can just pass them down. Just pass them down. Yeah. Okay. I'm not exactly looking for something like that, but I saw that mailbox in oh. Middleton by the Senior Citizen oh. Center. And uh, what I was looking for is something like that, uh, but we can get a mailbox. It doesn't have to be that color but as long as the Lions logo's on it, and we would like that to be placed somewhere by the library, because we figured that would be the most effective place to get glasses. As, as I sit on, as I am a Lions that goes to Mexico, every year we deal with 80,000 pairs of glasses we send down there. And we see, in a two week time period, we see anywhere between 10 and 12,000 people in two weeks, okay? The reason that we want to recycle glasses is because the United States doesn't allow recycled glasses to be given within the United States. <laughs> Bless you. So we have to, uh, so we, when we go to Mexico, 80% of the people in Mexico do not have access to eyeglasses. 20% do, and it's opposite in the United States. And so what we're trying to do is be able to collect the glasses and be able to be more efficient. And we figured that a placement in the library would be, near the library, would be the best place for it. Okay? We certainly would like to give you some prototypes of things that we could provide you with as far as uh, logo or mailbox, you know, something that would be suitable to the city of Delafield. Okay? One more picture. All right. This is the reason why we go. This 
lady is 64 years old, a highly myoptic person. She hasn't seen anything in front of her face. The only thing she sees is stuff in front of her face. Thank you. The only thing she sees is stuff in front of her face, all right? And so she is like 64 years old, so she's never seen anything, all right? So we found a pair of glasses for her with the guidance of an optometrist that we bring down with us. And her glasses, we found a pair for 20, minus 20, minus 20, which is like Coke bottle glasses, mm -hmm. okay? We put the glasses on her and she had to take them off. You couldn't see, it was hurting her. And so we worked for like maybe 15 minutes, putting the glasses on, taking the glasses off, getting her eyes used to it because the eye has six muscles to it. And so we're stretching those muscles out, which has never been stretched out before. So after 15 minutes of working with her, she had a smile on her face, and the first thing she saw was me. I was so happy. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my request for you guys to consider that. When you look at, uh, I just have a couple, I know we're not supposed to talk, but um, I have just a quick question. I mean, that was a, like, a looked like an old post office box, but are there some things that, do you want it that big, and do you have some ideas of where we might find stuff like that? We can find a, a post office box, and we can color it, or paint it any okay. way that you see okay. fit. All right. Okay? Uh, okay, thank you. So, we can get those. Okay. Great. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that work. You're welcome. You can keep the pictures. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, are there any other citizens' comments, Mary? Come on up. Good evening, everyone. My name is Mary Daniel. I live at 309 Wisconsin Avenue here in beautiful Delafield. This evening I'd like to talk about, on the agenda, number six, the consent agenda, A. Um, that is, let me put my glasses on. Uh, resolution 2021-17, a resolution to set the 2022 impact fees for the schedule for the city of Delafield. After reading many pages, specifically the property and open and statement of values, which involves the municipal property insurance company, I called and reached out to Molly Schneider <laughs> for help as to where this would fall on the agenda this evening. And then to Amy, our treasurer, for more help, which thank you to both of them. My concerns were forwarded to Tom mid-afternoon today. Uh, this agenda this evening is uh, 83 pages which was posted Friday, October 1st at 2 p.m., and it's a lot to read, to say the least. So my concerns are with number 14, uh, Legion Park, which has a value of a little over $11,000 for bleachers, doggy stations, garbage containers, five metal picnic tables, wood picnic tables, et cetera, et cetera. My understanding is that the city of Delafield had a 20-year lease with the Legion for using the baseball field. And that lease was not renewed. So the bleachers, the tables, et cetera, which have a value of almost just over $11,000, were, I'm gonna use in quotes, given to the Legion. So should the value of this still be on our insurance policy? And I would guess the Legion Park is no longer a Delafield Park. Further down, under number 22, under lift stations, number 18, which is located at 4800 Village Court in Delafield, which is on the north side of Delafield, near the Parquin Village Apartments. It lists things of value for $314,000, some of which are fire hydrants for 271, the statue of the ch three children on a log for 20, statue of the boy and the girl reading, for 16, and the statue of the boy fishing. The statue of the boy and girl reading are right out here in the front of City Hall, and the other two statues have been stored in the upper level of the DPW since they've been donated many years ago. 
So are there really fire hydrants at lift station number 18? Um, another question I had was number eight, Dobkin Street parking lot. Where is this? To the best of my memory, part of Dobkin Street was closed when the apartments on Well Street were built and the other small section of Dobkins has no parking lot, but it has, it's, has a doggy station, garbage containers, and recycling for about $1,300. So I have some questions, and I think Tom's going to be able to help me with them. Um, but there's good news. People ask at the Delafield History Center at Hawks Inn when a building was built. So one of these reports under Statement of Values has the year built. So now we can begin to answer those questions. Some of them might need a little tweaking because they're newer buildings. And I personally learned that Delafield has 22 lift stations in our sewer system. So that's all I have to say tonight. So mm -hmm. thank you, everybody. All right, thank you for sharing your comments. Thank you, Mary. All right, seeing no further citizens here, citizens' comments are now closed. And we'll move on to number six, consent agenda. Well, I'll so move. Yeah, I'll second. Okay, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor uh, say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Nay. Abstentions? Passes. Okay. Move on to number seven. Boards, committees, commission reports. Uh, anything for licenses? No. Okay. We'll move on to planning commission. All right, Kurt. All right. We did have a meeting last week. A um, few topics of interest. One, um, again, I brought up last time, uh, the Boathouse, successful business up on Highway 16 near Parliquin Village um, on Highway 16, um, northwest corner of the city. Uh, provided a uh, business plan of operation and site plan and, uh, and that as a concept and they're coming back to us with their final um, plans in that um, in our next meeting I believe and um, also something discussed was and the applicant wasn't there but there was plenty of questions um, the Kowalski um, uh, kitchen furnishes a remodeling company right here in the corner um, um, what is that? Milwaukee Street and Genesee is proposing a remodel for the to the facade of the building, and uh, lots of questions about how it's going to look and how it's going to fit in. So we're looking forward to that. Um, look at the minutes or the the packet for the next plan commission meeting because I suspect they'll be there at our next meeting to talk about that. And we did advance the uh, effort to look into um, changing the tree. Uh, preservation ordinance on raising the fee for tree caliper inches um, to from 150 to 250. So we're that was unanimous, and it's coming. We're waiting for that to come back from uh, uh, the city planner and attorney for a resolution or uh, an update to the zoning that'll end up coming back to here as well, um, as well as a public hearing. And the same goes for. Um, possible changes and clarifications to how we approve um, community-based residential facilities in residential areas based on the number of beds and what types of things we're looking for. So that's also something that's that we're working on. And um, aside from that, there was not much else. Um, so look for our next uh, meeting posting later this month if you're interested in what's going on. And that would be it. Sounds good, thank you very much. Okay, we'll go on to Lake Welfare Committee, which I believe there was no meeting. Correct. And then we'll move on to Park and Rec, Tree Board. Park and Rec had a meeting um, last week, I believe. A um, couple of the highlights. One was the uh, establishment of a volunteer group headed by our own Mary Daniel um, to... Um, to continue to the maintenance of the Bark River Restoration Project. Um, now that our contract is um, trailing off with um, the uh, maintenance along the edge, so weeding and whatnot, um, Mary's group will um, meet several times over the summer um, to um, clean up. She's been trained by the existing contractor into how um, to go about it. 
in a way that preserves that riverbank. Um, and um, we'll report back to park and rec um, pre-season, post-season, and as needed in between. So we thank her very much for volunteering to do that and organizing that effort. Um, that's about it. Another report. Great. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll move on to E, Public Works Committee. Committee reported by Mr. Barron. So in your packet, if you go to page sheet number 49, there's a map. <laughs> it looks something like this. And uh, so on Wednesday night, there's a meeting at 6.30 of the Public Works Committee, and it's basically uh, a meeting to just discuss and have take public input on, on the proposed trail map and the document that's attached to it. And there's a page on there that shows all the trails going out probably 10 to 20 years before we'd get to some of these. Some are going to be, will, will fall into developers' laps. Uh, some will be public works projects over the years. So um, there's been a lot of uh, time spent on this, uh, particularly by our committee chairman, who seems who has kind of volunteered to staff this thing for the last year. Uh, the highlights, I would say, is first of all, we adopted Park and Rec's plan in its entirety with a notation that a lot of the trails that are uh, kind of squiggly and purple through vacant lands are there just to indicate a trail will go through there. It's not an exact location. So when a developer comes along, they can pick it up and work it into their development. So uh, that's probably the most sketchy on the thing. The more significant ones follow the roads we all know about, Highway C, Nagwicka Road, Milwaukee Street, Main Street, uh, some of those roads. Uh, we also identified some areas near downtown where we think for very little money, we can improve the existing network of sidewalks. And so you'll see things like uh, on Poplar, Poplar Path, uh, there's a little little nip uh, to the Lake Country Trail off out of that Lapham Peak subdivision. Uh, Lapham, I think it's Lapham Road, or I mm -hmm. can't recall. Um, <clears throat> we certainly endorse using Nagawaki Park, which has a lot of existing facilities. There's some streets that I'm, I'm talking about going up north towards Nagawicka Road with some connection over some vacant land that is still there. I, it, it's interesting because I was here for the Plan Commission presentation a week ago, and I was talking to somebody that knows something about some of those lands, and I looked something up, and in 1974, Dot White was the mayor, and there's a certified survey map that was filed, and on there, there's a 10-foot uh, reservation for a trail, bike trail right where we were drawing it. <laughs> oh, that's pretty cool. I mean, and so it's just people have been thinking about this a long time, and I, I, I have not heard a lot about trails until maybe 15 years ago, so mm -hmm. I think it's interesting that almost 50 years ago someone put it on the map. And I guess that's the tone of this, that there's probably lines on this map that won't be built for 50 years. But I think in 20 to 30 years a lot of this will be done. Well, and, and I'm thrilled to see it and commend everybody because it's exactly what folks have been asking for is sort of a combination of parks and recs insights into what is needed and then public works sort of more of the nuts and bolts the, you know it's just the smart way I think to approach it well it, we're trying to and there are people that are still concerned about trails in front of their houses mm -hmm. and, but we're trying to show a bigger picture that it's part of a bigger system and uh, we're trying to be fair about it. We're not just picking on one one neighborhood or whatever. So, so I, I have a question. Yeah. On the uh, south end of the lake, you have the Milwaukee Street in yellow, but there's also then the rails to trails that a lot of people use, the multimodal. Is there a reason we have two there? Well, because Milwaukee Street is on, it's still considered an opportunity for a path at some point. Right, yeah, and I'm just thinking that it's a very narrow street and there's a bike trail two blocks it's, away. I, so. I, that would I, be my question, like practically does it make sense? Th that's a more difficult yeah. one to build. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I will say on our list, 
um, I don't know where that is, but it's down yeah. the list. And, and our, our goal is to, is to wisely spend money. And so you're going to see some smaller, cheaper fixes within five years, along with always mm -hmm. picking something on a major street. And uh, so it's, it, it, what, what I like about it is now it's become kind of the work of the park and rec, or rather the uh, public oh, works committee as it was assigned. And, um, and it, it should carry over as we have a turnover. And there's no reason we can't amend this in the future. But if, if this is passed, it's going to come forward to us just like the park and rec plan. It will be adopted and put into the master plan. So I'm highlighting it. If people are interested to come, either for or against, but please come and talk to us. Don't you think this is the time people should come? Yes. So, yeah. Yes. Get there now and not wait until. Right. But you never told me. <laughs> well, and so we've encouraged. That's why it's highlighted on yeah. this agenda. That's why I'm taking the time to talk about it. Mm -hmm. It's two days from today. Thank you. There really was no other work on that. The meeting. <laughs> so that's great. Thank you very much, Jim. Okay, we'll move down to Delahart. Dreiker, did you have a meeting? Let me think. Yes, we did, and we have. Um, we're looking. We're investigating a. Uh, we've got increased phosphorus limits coming up uh, two years out that are, will involve a rather substantial investment annually for chemicals to be applied despite some of the upgrades we've done recently with the infrared, I mean the ultraviolet. Um, so we just, we agreed to get uh, three proposals from contractors to um, help us with uh, using some biology instead of just chemistry. Um, so we're gonna try to avert spending on chemicals and have uh, uh, our own little nature experiment take care of the phosphorus uh, with the holding tanks and stuff that we have. So it's, it's nothing, nothing crazy innovative. It's just going to take some design work, and we're going to end up with uh, some bids coming in over the next six months to act on so we can uh, avoid, like I said, a chemical budget when we can just use infrastructure and methods to, to do the same thing. And um, uh, that would be it. And we've got our regular meeting in another eight weeks. So. Sounds good. Excuse me, Tim, could you yeah. just elaborate on the two-year thing? You said there's in two years. Well, um, yeah, our, our, uh, our, our state legislature and governor signed, us, signed Wisconsin up for um, an extremely aggressive phosphorus limit for because um, we're a point source, um, as are any water treatment facilities are. But um, so our current facility won't meet those goals unless we make a change. Okay. One change we can do is, is procedurally by using a combination of different chemicals, which will be about a, a budget item of about somewhere between a quarter million and $350,000 a year. And there's a way to not do that, which involves um, more time and just pr process with um, the biology. Uh, our, our plant manager calls them bugs, right? So they, uh, one, one organism eats another organism and okay. we get the same result. So it's just a matter of, we need, we needed some infrastructure changes. Um, I think it's fall of 2023 is when we okay. need to have this in place by. So we're, we're getting bids to head that expense off at the pass and spend money on uh, about two million or two and a half million dollars in infrastructure instead of 300 grand a year forever. So. Okay, yeah, definitely. Do you happen to know, or Tom or anybody else happen to know what might be the next sewage treatment plant upstream from the lake? What facility? Uh, the Bark River from yeah. us? Boy, I don't know. Just kind of. I don't know off the top of my head, but I can find out. I don't okay. know. But we know what we know very precisely what comes in and what goes out. I mean, yeah. we have a chemist and a. That sounds like you guys are on it. So. And yeah, okay. once it once it hits Illinois, though, all bets are off. They do what they want. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that's it for Delta. Thank you. Just thought I'd take a shot at our neighbors. <laughs> well deserved. Alrighty, sounds good. Uh, no police commission, correct? None. Okay, library board, Jackie. We did not meet since our last common council meeting, but the library board meets uh, October 12th, a week from tomorrow, 6.30, right here. Okay, thank you much. I don't believe there's any zoning board of appeals. Uh, Jim, promotion to tourism. 
Well, the minutes are, the draft minutes are attached, and um, I guess basically good news. Uh, it seems that the revenues are coming back, and so much so that we had a proposed budget of 150000 for next year, but we actually approved 1675 only because there are some some marketing opportunities that we wish to take advantage of, and, and it looks like the revenue is there to cover it. So um, that's basically the gist of it. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay, Lake Country Fire and Rescue Board. Uh, the board met in late September. We adjusted our operating uh, budget, 2022 budget, to reflect the increase in health insurance premiums from 4% to 7% actual. Um, and then we have uh, debated the allocation of the fund balance between the three original communities, Neshota, Shaniqua, and Delafield. And that debate continues with um, uh, an investigation on how to um, distribute those funds because it's potentially prohibited under the intermunicipal agreement. Um, so we're getting a legal opinion on that. All right, sounds good. Okay, number eight, unfinished business. Um, discussion and possible action regarding ordinance number 782 and ordinance to create section 2-100, section 2-191, uh, D of the City of Delafield Municipal Code regarding the conduct of remote attendance at meetings of the Common Council and City Boards, Commissions, and Committees. I think that's you, Tom. Yeah, this is something we've talked about the last two Council meetings regarding the uh, virtual meetings and remote attendance. Uh, it was brought before you as a draft at the last meeting, and the only comment we talked about was to change the, um, um, the deadlines for notification to be with respect to um, the deadline for noticing the meeting as opposed to the meeting itself. So uh, the way it's written now, uh, if someone wants to participate uh, remotely, uh, they would need to uh, contact the um, City Clerk uh, within 48 hours of the uh, deadline to publish uh, publish the or notice the meeting, and then the um, clerk would pass it on to the chairperson of the meeting, and that person would have to make a decision within 24 hours of the notice to uh, uh, of the meeting. Any questions on that? Well, this is for people who are just wanting to attend it. It isn't in case of, you know, like an emergency or something, you know, then you just wouldn't be in attendance, right? So this does cover emergencies and it okay. does say that we can, um, the chairperson or uh, of the committee could, could uh, allow people, including all members, to participate virtually, remotely. Right. I'm thinking a blizzard or something, you know, like where we just can't get here. Um, it would make sense to still function. Um, you know, it ends snow days, and as a teacher, that really sucks. But, you know, I mean, we could all meet as a common council, even if there were 18 inches of snow dropping. So the way this is written, you know, if the meeting notice would go out on Friday, mm -hmm. and we, uh, the weather report over the weekend starts showing a massive blizzard on Monday, and it, and it hits, um, this would not allow us to, um, um, to all of a sudden change direction and hold that meeting virtually. It wouldn't be, um, we'd, we'd be beyond the window to make that decision. Right. And does, does that make sense? I mean, well, it's unlikely it's, it's going to happen, but just a question. I mean, in the, in the pre-COVID days, we just canceled the meeting and, and right. rescheduled it if needed. Well, that's what you still would do. Yeah. Well, I think Jackie's trying to figure out if there's a way that we could hold that meeting right. virtually. You know, like, it's no longer necessary to have a snow day for a school district because we have all the technology. Yeah. We just switched but online. We're, we're saying we're giving people a proper public notice of a meeting. Right. And we have to live with that, I think. Yeah. And that was what we asked for, is that we, we want some thing they can rely upon. So mm -hmm. either that it's... That works, yeah. Either it's virtual or not with notice, and if we have to cancel it, just like we had to cancel any other meeting, yeah. we can't adopt a virtual mode at the last minute. Right. Yeah, and I think you're, I, I, get, I get what you're saying, so, the whole idea of how you have to have a certain amount of notice. Right. Right. Gotcha. And it would be consistent with the Department of Justice um, opinions to 
not call for a virtual meeting that late in the process after notice had gone out. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it also, accom it, it also accommodates um, a situation where, where one or multiple members might be subject to the same type of a odd situation like the like COVID or um, something's on the agenda and they happen to have their uh, particular committee has two or three situations with family issues where mm -hmm. people are traveling and just trying to make a accommodation is it reasonable to keep the meeting in place based on that situation and I, I mean yeah so and what you're saying is if somebody had to travel a sicker family you know just to um, that they could, in fact, then attend the meeting virtually. Is that what we're saying? With but you, you know, need people to would have you need to have the right notice. So yeah, yeah, if you have the right notice. Yeah. So yeah. if there's, who knows what those would be? <laughs> so I like, don't know. like the like the the COVID is a perfect example, and that's yeah. kind of how I'm, probably, I'm sure that's why this came up. Mm -hmm. But um, that combined with other things, you suffer for a lack of a quorum, and you've got. Uh, some significant order of business that otherwise would be really punitive for either an applicant or right. harmful to the city's budget or whatever else right. to prolong it. I think mm -hmm. it makes sense to keep right. it it's in an, place. Right, it's not optimal, but it's, yeah, Yeah, for it's sure. just, and I think, <laughs> yeah, I like, whatever, it's not, it's not too to allow someone to be persistently absentee just because mm -hmm. they don't like driving to be here in person. So it gives some discretion right to the council to the uh, committee chairperson so okay. i'll make a motion to pass ordinance 782 as presented i'll second it all right is there any discussion hearing none all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed abstentions passes great okay next is mayor Ooh. <laughs> Mary's being too still. <laughs> there we go. Bucket of tennis Our lights went off in the back. Good see it on TV, though. Okay, Maybe. Mayor's report. Uh, no Mayor's report today. So we'll move on to 10A, discussion to create an ordinance to amend Section 2-194 in the City of Delafield Municipal Code and update the order of business for Common Council meetings. Tom? Yeah, well, let me get to this. This is an item that Molly had on the agenda, and it really revolves around um, currently the, the municipal code defines our order of business for our uh, common council meeting. And uh, she noted that the Deer Management Committee is not included on the list of committees. And um, so she thought that that's something that needs to be addressed. And she put together a memo and is looking for feedback from you on uh, options for uh, addressing that. Um, you know, ranging from just simply adding Deer Management Committee somewhere in that list to maybe taking uh, all the committees out of the list and just indicate that where uh, committee reports fall on, on the agenda and, and not have to worry about um, um, making sure that we've got each and every committee listed in the uh, ordinance. Um, another one she mentioned would be to leave the existing committees in the ordinance and then just add another um, category for uh, other committees although the um, list on the agenda it also holds does if I'm not mistaken links if they're posted said again don't the on the agenda can't you link to the uh, agenda or the minutes from other meetings wouldn't that then eliminate that yeah, so under the heading of other committees then under that they would list the other committees that are going to be on the agenda um, it, it's just, I think it, from Molly's perspective, it's a way to, every time we have an additional short-term committee or something, to not have to uh, be concerned about making sure we codify it in, into the ordinance. I think the other committees is a good idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've got, because you've got this development committee now, and that, that will be done. But. Any thought of adding Deer Management Committee as long as we're talking about it now and then uh, adding a other committees category? It sounds appropriate to me. It's but a standing committee. committee. I guess you could add it, yeah. yeah but it's a standing. committee with a sunset clause, right? I would have to review the ordinance, but it sounds like you know that for sure. Yes. Okay. 
So it, it's, Why would you it's got it? a sunset clause for like two more years. Was it a date specific, the sunset clause? Can't answer that specific yeah. question, but it did have an expiration, let's put it that way. So I, I think it should just fall under other committees. Yeah, I, I agree. Okay. Because we're going to have that whole deer thing figured out. 18 months. Yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think no, so. I, the other committees is, I think, I like the all-encompassing mm -hmm. thing because they are, they're, they're seasonal. I mean, it is seasonal there's points of sure. interest for sure, yeah. Okay, and I'll bring that feedback back to Molly and she'll come uh, back with an ordinance at the next meeting for your consideration. Thank you. Yep. Sounds good. Okay, on to 10B, discussion of possible action. Regarding resolution number 2021-16, a resolution authorizing an adjustment to the admissible levy limit for increases in charges associated with Lake Country Fire and Rescue. Tom. Yeah, so this is a similar ordinance to what we passed back in 2014. It just simply states that um, the city of Delafield uh, has the option of using the tool of the uh, Joint Fire Department credit to our municipal levy limit. Uh, and in order for any one of the uh, municipalities in a joint fire department to be able to use this credit, uh, all of them need to uh, adopt uh, such an ordinance. Um, so this is something that's uh, a couple of the municipalities have already adopted. The rest are going to be adopting here uh, within the next week or two. Um, and um, the only change whatsoever with this that from what we've passed uh, in, in the past is that... Um, it used to be based on the consumer price index at the end of September. Uh, and since then, the law has changed to the end of August just to give uh, municipalities a little bit more time to have that number in place and uh, to know what their uh, budget situation is. So that's the only change from current practice. I'll move to approve resolution, resolution 2021 16. I'll, sec I'll, I'll second. I'll um, second. So, quick question: Why in the world would you not exercise your ability to use this? Like, why? Why would is why? Why would a one of the one of our partners in Lake Country Fire and Rescue elect not to leverage the credit opportunity? Um, is is there? It would be a municipality that. Has more. Wants no budget flexibility and wants to keep taxes as absolutely positively low as they possibly possibly could be, regardless of what it does to operations. And and that's has that happened? Where some of our any one of the our, our other members has not exercised the. So when I talked to the administrators, they all seemed to indicate that they thought it was likely to pass at all the communities. Matt's looking at me like he knows something different. Uh, I. Uh, that's not what I, 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 the resolution will pass, yes. I, but, I, but I know that some communities are indifferent to it. But, so, but it's, not one, it's not one tie, all tie. Like if one person doesn't exercise the right to use the credit, no. we don't lose our right to no. it. No. Matt, okay. are you, Matt, are you mixing up the ability to use some of the credit versus maximizing the credit? Is, is that what you're? Um, maybe that, maybe, maybe so. I yeah. don't know that that's a difference, a difference without a, a distinction without a difference. So, so right now, this joint fire department um, credit says that if the fire department um, budget increases by um, no more than CPI plus 2%, uh, which is 5% this year, CPI was 3%. Mm -hmm. uh, so if it, but if it um, increases by no more than that, then the total increase you can add that onto your levy limit and, it, and, and there's no impact. Uh, if you're a penny over CPI plus 2%, you don't get any adjustment to your levy limit. Um, and I know that there's some municipal, municipal concern that um, Lake Country Fire and Rescue was um, looking to budget all the way up to CPI plus 2% as opposed to maybe CPI plus, you know, you know instead of 5%, maybe Three and a half percent, or four percent, or, mm -hmm. or maybe that maybe thought they thought a, a different number was more appropriate. Is that fair to say, Matt? It is absolutely. All right. Sounds good to me. All right. Any other discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. 
abstentions passes. Okay, we'll move on to 10C discussion regarding the approaching retirement of City Attorney Jim Hammes and the process to appoint to confirm the next City Attorney. Tom again? Yeah, we did get um, um, Jim sat down with, uh, with Kent and I and, and told us that he's going to be retiring. Uh, he says it's likely going to be somewhere around the end of the year, but he's flexible based on our needs. Um, and uh, so just want to bring that to your attention first and foremost. We certainly appreciate the years of um, service that Jim has provided to us. Uh, but now we need to look towards um, finding ourselves a new city attorney. Uh, so that position is one that is appointed by the mayor uh, with confirmation by the Common Council. And um, in talking it through with Kent, what we do intend on is um, going through an RFP process and identifying various attor municipal attorneys and firms that um, uh, are appropriate for our needs and then uh, going through that type of process. Sounds good. Yeah. All right. We'll move on to 10D, approval of vouchers, payables report to reporting dates of 921-21, in the amount of $107,785.29 for accounts payables and $71,387.36 for payroll. I move to approve the voucher list. Second. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, Extensions passes. All right, item number 11, report of city officials, city administrator up again. I have no report this evening. There we go. City clerk. Molly. Molly included some information on the local redistricting, just for your information at this time. She does plan to bring back um, additional information to you by the end of this week. Thank you. Thank you. All right, number C, City Treasurer, August 2021 Treasurer's Report. That's in the packet. And then D, Council Request for Future Agenda Items. Oh, I have a short one. It's not a just maybe necessarily a discussion action, but just wondering about actions I've seen along uh, the, it's the Lake Country Trail, but also I've seen um, along Bleecker Street, um, just south of Milwaukee um, and north of Maine, it looks like just clear cutting. Um, and I'm just wondering what's, why? Um, it looks like, I mean, what I've seen is just a big thing that's just coming along, cutting down all vegetative matter. Um, and it's, I have a minute and a half video from the trail, but there's a short swatch. I've just noticed it here and there. And, um, I'm just wondering what's going on. So if we can get a little report on that. Certainly. Thank you. Sounds good. All righty. Would anybody like the lion's request on the next agenda? Sure. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. All right. We'll go on to number 12. Seeing no further business, the meeting is now adjourned at 743. Thank you. Jackie, do you think that could just be... Yeah. That's what it is. What is it? Re energy.